Look, we have a very uh, honored uh, guest today, Mr. Hector Gallardo, who's considered like one of the masters of uh, Cuban music in New Orleans. I've been knowing Hector for many, many years and uh, played many different groups together. You know? So um, I guess we'll just play a little bit and ask questions about uh, uh, Cuban music and whatever he wants to tell us. Uh, Hector, tell, first of all, tell us, um, how did you get here? Like, what year did you get to the United States from Cuba? Well, I came here in 1957 first as a tourist. As a tourist? Yeah. Oh, you were a tourist visa. In Miami, and they would say, you Cuban? No, no, you look white, you know, you can't be a Cuban, you know. So, right. what are these people? I didn't speak English, but the translator said, what the hell are they talking about, you know? And, uh, and they would say, uh, you know, things like, they, you look European, you know. Cuba was a colony of Spain, of course. You know. The part so, of America is here. Huh? The part of America. To Miami. 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 Yeah. And um, then I, I, I stayed there for two months and then I came back in 1961. But was that after the, the Cuban Revolution? Yeah. I, I, I went through the whole thing. Actually, you know, before. What was that, what was that like? So before, before the Cuban Revolution, you well, were? The, before the Cuban Revolution, Cuba had made the, the most. Uh, I never seen changes in, in uh, everything was socialized already. You know, I could, go, I could walk into uh, an emergency room, of course, only in the, in the big city they had that. And, and, my God, he's playing in by the way. You know, because I, I was a kid, and we playing with each other, and one kid threw something, and he you know, caught me, and I went to an emergency room that would stitch me up, give me a tetanus on the shot, and no way, you know, no matter what emergency it was. And then uh, they, uh, the government before Castro made this public school that was the most beautiful advanced school I ever been into. I still had dreams about that school. It was so advanced and beautiful. And um, and then when he this guy took over, you know, the guy was making reforms and everything was changing. That rich hang around with the poor and the middle class. You know, we all uh, treated each other as unequal, you know, it was it was it was getting beautiful. Then when the guy took over the rich skater, oh communism and all that, you know, and a lot of people started to leave and, and uh, my mother was already here. It's all one story, it was actually more accidental. So I, I, that's how I ended up here. She sent for me later on, you know. So you're a tourist. <laughs> I wish I was a did tourist. You go, did you go on a swamp tour when you came? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In Miami, you know, everywhere I went, they, they would go and say, ah, oh, oh, you know, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know. And uh, they, they, they really were ignorant about the way uh, we look and what they thought we lived up in trees and, you know, like we weren't civilized, you know. They thought we didn't have electricity. I was very, you know, like, wow, these people don't know nothing about, uh, you know, they, they, my, 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 my country. Cuba is a, Cuba's a big island. Mm -hmm. You know, by the way, before I forget, the Cubans came here in, in, uh, centuries ago. You, you know about that. You know. Yeah, and they brought uh, the, the Cuban music called um, uh, Contra Danza. It means con Contra Dance. And Contra Danza was, uh, it still is, you know, it, it's very complex. When the Cubans want to play complex music, they play Contra Danza, they play Danzón, Danzonete. That, that music has more changes than jazz, by the way, you know. And they brought that music here, and from that music, they created poor um, transcription. They, they created a second line and ragtime. If you listen to the original, you're going to say, yeah, that is true. And they have some music historians that work really? on it. Yeah, that's interesting, because I mean, a lot, a lot of the early, uh, like the music of uh, Louis Moreau Gottschalk was, uh, had, had that kind of influence, that Caribbean. The French guy that was here? Yeah. Yeah. The French pianist, uh, composer, but uh, he was heavy now sort of a precursor to, uh, you know, Rang on and all that kind of stuff. You know? Of course, he has that, he has that, <coughs> that Caribbean accent, that, uh, that Caribbean kind of rhythm to it. You know? Yeah, Cuban music is syncopated in every, in every, in every bar and counterpoint, but it, it's complex, but it's got to be done tasty. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the music that you are all more familiar with is the music that is created for dancing, because all the Cuban music has to be also danceable. If it's not danceable, people uh, will teach it away. Contra danza was uh, fast, but it was also danceable. You know, you, you have to dance because otherwise the people don't like it, no matter how complex it is. One of these days, I'm, I'm going to give you some copies of, of uh, Contra danza. And, uh, Mm -hmm. But I haven't been able to do so, and, uh, so that we can play here and you can see what I'm talking about. You, know. you said well, that the, okay. the music started in Cuba, jazz music? Well, you know, you know, jazz is a concept. You know, here uh, they have a structurized the style of what we know today as jazz. And when you listen to the solos, 
and uh, the, the style and everything they play, it, it's it's it, it's got a structure. You know, everybody learns that that uh, format, that solo that uh, such and such a did, and he was a little bit uh, ahead of his time, and he created a new chapter. So everybody becomes, you know. Uh, Oh, that's the next guy to follow, and it goes on. The only thing about jazz is that I, that I find boring. He was never like this. <laughs> but you understand, it's that downbeat thing. I can't stand a bass going into downbeat, downbeat, downbeat. You I like can, you like syncopation. Yeah, I like syncopation. If I don't hear a bass playing, there's syncopation. a lot of jazz that syncopated. I don't, don't, I mean, as you're talking about, you know, early jazz and uh, you know, like bebop and things like that, or whatever, where, where basses are playing more like yeah, form well, they do. They do a little more, but it's still downbeat. You know, yeah. I, I remember one time I walked into a club, and uh, I don't know if you were at that night on that gig, but uh, James, I remember James was playing, uh, and I walked in, and, and as soon as James saw me, he was going, doom, 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 doom. and as soon as he saw me, it, it, you know, he went, doom, 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 doom. and he sounded good like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you, can't, you can't play that way on birds. <laughs> no, he was doing it, and I said, you know what, it sounds cool like that, it sounds better than going doom, 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 you know. Did, did anyway, start, we're going to jam a little bit. Did it start in Cuba? I'm sorry? Did it start in Cuba? Did what? Jam. No. 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 Well, you know, the Cubans were doing uh, uh, improvisation before, you know, uh, just about anybody else, but uh, you know, improvisation has always existed up to our world, but the Cubans were very advanced. But you know, New Orleans is considered like the, mo the northernmost Caribbean city, so I mean, obviously that was a, that was a very strong component, you know, the, 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 the rhythms of Cuba and, and uh, you know, the Caribbean, so. Jelly Roll Martin? Yeah, Jelly Roll Martin, a lot of that, dum, 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 you know, those, those type of, those type of, uh, that comes from the Cuban rhythms, music. you know, uh, definitely Caribbean rhythms, in, 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 you know, in, in influenced, you know. They got, they got voodoo barbecue, it's like New Orleans, Caribbean. Right, 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 right. right. Well, let's. Uh, you want to play? You want to play? I'm. Gonna, you know, they have a band, but I. I'll, uh, I, I guess everybody's here from the combo, right? That usually plays. You know? Is there? Well, we're, we're just gonna play a tune and see. Uh, let's do. Let's do this tune. Uh, uh, my little suede shoes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do the field. Before we start playing, I'll say it quickly. Everything that you hear on Cuban drums is a hundred percent structuralized. The solos they have to be learned. It's a language. Don't mean words. But you have to learn those phrases. So when you when you solo, then you modify that phrase. You mix it with this one and that one. But everything that you do, you know what you're going to do. It's not meaning mighty more, and I'm going to hit here, and I'm going to go, you know. Uh, and maybe after we play something, you can talk about what instrument each right. instrument is supposed to. This is the uh, the males are the tenor of the Cuban drums. The, the two maduras are the bass drums, and the bongos are the piccolo of the Cuban. Drums.
a different thing when you have when you play with sticks and you play with your hands like that. When I was doing this press here and I did it with the bounces. Right? On the two power I can do it like this. Simple. Spend on the fingers. So you do it, see? I developed a technique um, never before, you know, I did my own technique. I like to do the same thing like this. Long and the the, the you know the, the first bend of the fingers. You don't have to worry about this finger here, that's just to lean on. And 
it sounds like this. On the bongos, it, it, it gives you a beautiful sound when you do it on the bongos. Especially on the bongos, because <laughs> the other one, it takes too much surface, and the bongos are, they have smaller space. You know, if you do it like this, the guys do it so I developed this technique I'm not getting that top out right there that's the one I was looking for because I just put these new heads on these bongos and I gotta get used to them because I always play with um, real skins but I uh, I put these heads on uh, my boss's uh, bongos he's uh, now a student of mine the guy that was a uh, Call, who's a very nice uh, boss, I, I told him that it would be practical for him to um, have the uh, synthetic heads because you can leave them tuned for days and it will not tear up. Uh, let's do something else, you know? Uh, yeah, I want to know, now, you know, when you, when all these instruments are playing together, yes. they all have separate, specific parts that they play together, yes. right? And yes, I think yes, that's the thing that, uh, that's kind of interesting, you know, uh, is how all these different I know you can't play them all at the same time, you know? Maybe you could teach you and play one. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I, I had to do gigs in Miami, which I had to play half and half, and I really hated it, but I had to do it like this, you know? Uh, of course, I didn't have a... Actually, I had a drum set, and uh, on the drum set, I had to play like this. While I was playing, I had, you know, trying to emulate this, but only one hand, you know, no kind of And then I was trying to do, with, I mean, with the other hand, I was doing the uh, the kashkar, depending on the rhythm. In those days, the Wom Ko was was very uh, very popular. So the the the, the Wom Ko kashkar kashkar means the pill is what you play on the timbales. It, it's play like this. on the timbala is just to maintain time. You just maintain time with it. You, you don't play loud, you don't go No, you don't do that because that's the part of the timbala. So you just maintain time, whether you do it like this, from left to right, you know, or, or, or right to left, but you maintain time. Here I'm hitting on four and here it's on two. If you count on four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. With the fingernails like this, and you hold the stick like that, you're trying to get the sound of the timbala, that sound. So, but you, instead of going two, you're just doing one. So just, just for timing, you know, that's what you do there. And, and you play the bottom on the timbales when you're not on the bridge. Every time you're not on the bridge, you play down here. And only on the bridge, that's when you play the, uh, the bell and, and the cymbal, you know. All or less otherwise arranged. And the bongo player always has to play the big bass uh, bell on the bridge. The bongo player has to play uh, the bell too. When you, that's when you play with a large group, you know, agrupation. But um, the, the tumbadora is the one that carries the, uh, the the bass sounds. You know, like the, the upright bass, and the, the timbala will be the tenor, and the bongos will be the the piccolo. But then what they do is they counterpoint each other. But the, the most counterpointer is the bongo. The, uh, originally they didn't call them bongos. The guy who invented it in Cuba he called them himawas, which means. Uh, it's the Cuban hillbilly word for uh, twins. And what the bongo player is doing is, uh, they call it ricocheting. He's counterpointing what these two guys are doing and he's the one who's got the most freedom. So instead of just playing time, Uh, free form, you know, to uh, counterpoint what the timbales player is doing, you know, while the timbales player is playing on a double time like this, you know, the timbales player is playing, for example, I'm going to play just uh, simplify the, the one called Casca. You can start like this. And there's variations, I'm going to do a few. 
Do you want to do something on, on the timbales while you play that? Yeah, it's like, yeah. who wants to play timbales? Okay, okay. bring it forward a little bit, sorry. What, what are the congas when they classify it? That's the bass drum, but they're not called congas. Yeah. Remember that, the real name of the yeah. instrument is tumbadora. tumbadora. Yeah, congas is a misnomer. Yeah. Actually, if you have a congas, that's kind of a rhythm. The bass? The bass drum of, of the tumbadora, yes. What do I Let's play something simple like uh, uh you know um, try the same thing using your left hand. Alright, I'll try to green chimneys. It's real it's real easy. you should use. You see, uh, playing on clavier means that what the piano or the guitar is playing, it should uh, harmonize, it should fit in with the, what the clavier is doing. If you, if you play against it, then you're off clavier. So you have to play and write the montunas in a way that uh, they don't clash with the clavier, you know? It, it stays with the clavier, you know? It's like being out of chord. It's the same rule, you know. You have to play a montuno that that fits with the clavier. So, it, it, uh, um, here in New Orleans, for many years, when I have played with so many different groups, uh, they wanted me to play the clavier, and I have to keep changing. I would go to the two, three, three, two, oh, and yeah, over yeah. and over, because uh, everything was always off, off clavier. They would play a, a little segment that would be on the clavier. Uh, when they did transcribe a certain tune that was popular, uh, but nowadays there's a lot of stuff that is not uh, on clarity, you know. All right. So I don't even bother with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's play something. Uh, well, I guess we should wait to. Yeah. Back, if you play one uh, one two a rumba or a six eight, then you play the two three. Yeah. What, is the, uh, what is the name of the uh, tumbadora? Tumbadora. 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 A D O R A for one. Tumbadores for more than one. Now, when the Cubans play the uh, the, the rumbas, the ensemble, and they use their jive or slant, they they will call the bass drum here or or uh, baritone. In this case, this would be the bass and the baritone. Uh, they call it tumbador which also means the guy that plays the tumbador is called a tumbador too, or tumbadorista would be more like a pianist, you know, or piano player. They, they call it a, a tumbador. Then the guy who's playing the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tenor drum, uh, he would be called, um, that would be called tres dos, which means three two. And then the high pitched drum that does the solo, and it's all structurized. Everything that the guy's doing here, when he's going like a, You do things like I was doing a while ago.
All right, let's do uh, this. this uh, we haven't played this tune before, but it's, it's very similar to the one that goes. Play this pattern, this pattern here. When we go to do that, play this pattern here. I'll alternate with this one, go. Well, it's not, it's ignorance, you know, it's this is really... Yeah. You know what so a conga is in Cuba? This is a conga in Cuba. One of the traditional conga rhythms, they play this. That's one of the conga rhythms, you know. Uh, and uh, they're not play, they're not play actually with tumba they're playing with the bokua drum. The bokua drum is a drum that is shaped like this. You saw this here, man. Nice bokua or bat bata? No, Bokua. Bokua? Yeah, Bokua. Bokua is the one that's shaped like an ice cream cone that they see our nest fake playing on the I Love Lucy. He didn't know how to play that drum. <laughs> you know, he, he, he wanted to play one of the patterns he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> There's now one. we know. He was fucking, he was insane, but he didn't know how to play the instrument. And he was playing the poor man's version because the one he had, you can only play it in the Cuban uh, climate, which is dry. Cuba is not humid. So when you tune a drum like that, poor man's drum that is stacked in, you know, you can tune it with a candle, a little heat, and the drum will, and they will stay tuned. But here in the United States, you use that five, ten minutes later, uh, the drum goes you know, because of the humidity. So you, you gotta have it. But anyway, you know, the hardware, it, it, they're supposed to, you know, to have it. He was using, I don't know why, because that guy was a millionaire, you know. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the, uh, the the rhythms that is called conga. And then they also have the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the one that is called comparsa, which one drum is playing up beat, and I'll show you later. Come on. Uh, one, two. One, two, three,
it's it's not like you know on drum set you don't play uh, you don't play time like that. And especially these are uh, poly rhythms, but they're not just like any other poly rhythms. These are particularly uniquely Cuban poly rhythms. And and you know the masters in Cuba throughout the years, they are coming trying to come up with more vocabularies, more vocabularies, and uh, they have reached hundreds and hundreds of, you know of, of different phrases. And when you do on a solo, sometimes it's difficult for you to remember. So you do as many as you can remember when you do a solo. I have written uh, some new chapters, some new phrases that are very complex, and I intend to put them on YouTube with your help. So I have to claim that I'm the one who composed this. Because nowadays, all, every time you hear somebody doing a solo, all you hear is... student that came by the house last year and he says hey man I, uh, I don't want to learn <laughs> I want to learn how to make the drum spit you know so I taught him basic like this on this rhythm you know like speak instead of going <laughs> when you play roles it's like playing a whole note so you don't lose the beat you can go yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can, I can play a trumpet I can do a thrill and I can go you know and, and I'm not going to be offbeat and if you do a role you're not going to be offbeat but when you have to play these phrases on time with the orchestra that is when that tell is us what, what was the name of the rhythm we were just playing uh, well you know we just play a, a, a fusion a song of, Yes, we did song with a little mambo here and there, yeah. you know. So what are, what are the different categories of, you know, what's the difference between mambo and uh, wawanko and uh, yeah. bolero? What, what, are, what are those okay. different, is it different uh, dances or what? Yeah, they're all for dancing. The, the bolero is for the, the Cuban love songs. The bolero like is slow, slow songs. Slow songs, yeah. They play like this on the two mambo, like this. I'm just counting all the hands so you get an idea, right? they all have a cha-cha-cha part. They are half bolero and half cha-cha-cha. So usually on the bridge, they go to the cha-cha-cha part and that's when the timbale, the timbale always does exchange with a roll. It's called abanico because it resembles a hand fan. That's why they call it abanico. Uh, usually you go one, two, three, four, and you hit on one, you hit on three. One, two, and it's a rip shot. One, two, three. Thank you. 
still considered a bolero? Yeah, it's a bolero, but there's another uh, part of the bolero, another style. So it really, has to, do, it really has to do with tempos more than anything. Uh, yeah, you know, yes. Yeah. There's another type of the bolero uh, that you play on the little bell and it goes like this. Um, The tumba player is doing that. The tumba player would do it like this. Would do it like this. If you have three. Who taught you how to play all this stuff? Huh? Who taught you? <laughs> yeah, I good. did. For real? Self taught. Did you like, by help from records or what? Or from records, I used to watch the masters in Cuba, and I was intimidated. I was. You must have been pretty young in Cuba, though. Yeah. Well, I was fourteen when I left, but I used to watch them like right there. I used to go to the television shows, and they would be that close to me, you know, I happened to be sitting close to it, and the cameras were right there. And one time they brought this bongo player that hit that guy, it was great, man, and he was playing right next to me, and he was watching on a monitor camera what the dancer was doing, and he had to uh, follow her steps with the bongos. And mm -hmm. he, uh, that's, how, that's what the, uh, the guy who plays the quinto does. He, they, he watches the dancers, and, and he tries to do what they do on the quinto, you know? A question I have, because I'm a dancer, like, yes. can you address that? Like, what is it that I do with song, salsa? Okay, well, salsa, let me tell you something about salsa. Salsa is a mediocre version of Cuban music, you know? <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> salsa, salsa is like a general term, right? Just, yeah, it's, 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 it's sort of like... You know, point they say it is food, it's not music. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's, sort of gen, it's a sort of a general term, that the slang term that they use for, like, a lot. Just generally music from Cuba, I yeah. guess, or whatever. They, they put a new label on the music, uh, that, uh, trying to rip people off, and then it became the gospel, you know. But uh, it offended a lot of people in Cuba. Actually, some artists in Cuba, they, they wrote songs in which they were saying that that's not salsa, that's nothing, that's just, you know, bull, you know what. And uh, this is the song of Cuba, this is the huaracha. The huaracha is a, is a particular style of, of, uh, of song that became very uh, popular in, in the, uh, in the uh, 50s. It, when you listen to a record, it sounds very simple, but when you listen to the uh, tricks and the nitty-gritty, mm -hmm. it's not that simple, you know, like uh, what the timbala player is doing on the casket. There is a, a syncopated pattern that you play on the... Uh, I'm going to count it like 2-4, you know? 1, 2, instead of going, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's one pattern that they use it on, uh, on Manteca. Uh, the oh, yeah. timbala player is doing this. Pianissimo, you play soft, you know, you know, you don't play the barrel, you don't play the cymbal. If we are, it's just a small group and there's an electric guitar, you know, uh, and you're on the bridge, it, it, you can reinforce it with the, with the cymbal and the bell, you know, but you gotta give him room to breathe, you know, don't, don't overcrowd him, you know. What, what happened when he was trying to play with the dancer? Pardon me? What happened when he was trying to play with the dancer? Well, you know, if the dancers know how to how to dance the stuff, the rhythm that you play. A lot of times when I play Cuban jazz, people come and they and they they don't relate to that. I'm playing Cuban rhythms here. He's playing Cuban rhythms. Play the uh, the one one cool or orchestrated pattern on the bass. Which one? The one that goes gum 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 gum. That one. What's Tiro Puente Puerto Rico? That's, that's an orchestrated one one go. Tiro Puente Puerto Rico? Pardon me? Tiro Puente. Tiro Puente what? Was he Puerto Rican? He was born in New York. Uh, Puerto Rican descent, but uh, he was crazy about Cuban music. That's what he played. You know, I played with him in New York and he told me that. Okay, then to that.
tempo. But these guys, the dancers, uh, they, they stand still and they move the lady around and they barely move because they cannot. They just like looking at the lady dance. They can't maintain mm -hmm. time, you know. And uh, yeah, well, you know, I can grab her and throw her like this and go like that. <laughs> and all, if I'm standing still, but try to do those uh, turnarounds while you doing that, you know. Ding, 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 ding. There's a lot of hip movement, you know. To, to be able to uh, dance that, you know. If you don't dance like this, like those people do, you know, uh, that, 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 that's the Anglo-Saxon uh, yeah. way they're going. your camera dancing. Cha-cha-cha, <laughs> 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 it's not just <laughs> one, <laughs> two, cha-cha-cha, <laughs> one, two, cha-cha-cha. No, cha-cha-cha had a lot of steps like this. I'm gonna do a few here, I'm, I, you know. I have, I'm 67 years old, so I cannot dance like I used to. But th this is one of the steps that Cha-Cha-Cha would, they, 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 they went like this. <laughs> James, Brown. Oh, yeah. James Brown got that from the Cha-Cha-Cha. And they were, you know, I was a kid and I knew how to do that and I also knew how to turn around. And they also did a step that was like this. And then they would change and they would do it like this. And then they would go backwards, they would do this. And then they will do it backwards. If I do it now, I'm probably going to fall over. But do, do the bass pattern. Ding, ding, dong. Ding, dong. And then. Steps and people in Miami were like, Oh, that kid is good. They didn't mention James, uh, James Brown because James Brown was not famous and he didn't do that stuff then, you know. But he, he saw the churches at dance and he said, Oh, yeah, Woo! So he started doing that, you know. You know. But uh, when, I, when I came back in the 60s, later on, I was doing that and people would say, Hey, you're doing James Brown very well. I said, No, I don't do James Brown, man. He's doing me, you know. He's, so he's doing before, what, uh, before wrap things up, I want to do the, the, the pattern you were doing on uh, Mambo. Uh, in, so, what, how do you say it? Yeah. Mambo Silenciado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so just, just, just the, it's a... Uh,
Yeah. 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 Yeah, I play every Friday uh, at the morning call. City uh, Park. Usually at 8 p.m. we start. Sometimes we start later, depending. And I'm very fortunate that I have these two guys here. You know, right now Josh was assisting me on the bass, and Todd and Ad over there. I've been teaching them the Cuban rhythms, you know. And. Uh, yeah. You went to Thailand, man. You're going to be a wonder over there. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we playing uh, the, nothing but Cuban jazz. You know, we we going from like a the bolero, you know. You know, by the way, nobody had ever put a third note on the bolero. Everybody. So when you yeah, that's Friday and Friday and Saturdays or, or that's Sundays too. Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, but what tomorrow time, time at night. Yeah, at night, 8 p.m. But tomorrow we're going to start at 2 o'clock because uh, the guitar player, Dylan, uh, he was a student of Steve also. Mm -hmm. you, you also told him, right? Yeah. Uh, Dylan has a gig at 6 p.m. So we're going to play like from uh, um, 2 to probably 4 or 5 at the most, depending on uh, how many people are going to be there. Uh, can, can you people Sunday? dance there? Yeah. For Sunday? Yeah. For Sunday. Sure. Uh, it's a good place to go get uh, coffee and venues. Play with us tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh. You say you could do the two o'clock gig, right? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. And uh, you know we we played boleros. You know uh, everybody has been playing the bolero with only two notes. They all even if they have four or five, I've seen them all. They don't, they haven't been able to come up with a third note. So they play bolero like this. Even if they have four or five two boleros, they go. So watch this. You know, I, I, this, I, I should have tuned this a little bit higher, and, but you know, it just happened to be like this today. So that's the third note on the bolero. Then if I have four, I have a fourth note, and a fifth note, and you know, and more, you know, and then, but you always come back to, uh, scale you know I can play you know depending on the key that we're playing you know I have four notes you know or even uh, even five but it, it, it all it all has to do with the uh, you know sometimes it's worth it when I uh, you know I, I have played a bunch of gigs in which I had four two melodies and it was worth it because it was the jazz fest another festival in, in Lafayette I remember that uh, during the, the tunes and on the break I, 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 I pulled a, a bottle that didn't look like this it was a plastic bottle and uh, I put some on my hand, and I started rubbing it on my hand, and when we finished playing that gig, I had like a bunch of mostly guys, you know, they came over and, hey, maestro, uh, what is that stuff you put in your hands? Come on, come on, you gotta tell us your secret, you know, because I, you know, uh, the band with everything was loud. What is your secret? I said, what secret, what do you mean? Uh, how come your hands are so tough and you can play like that, you know, and you don't hurt your hands, you know? And I said, what is that you put in your hands? And you know, actually, they, they all thought that I was putting cocaine on my hands. Really? I had to show them, I said, no, man. I don't put no drugs in my hands, it's just cooking oil. They, they didn't believe it, because I didn't have it in the bottom. Like this. That's why now I carry a bottle like this. Cooking so I had to open the bottle and make him smell, and they say, it "Smells yeah. like a lot of oil." I said, "Yeah, man. You know, you guys are watching something." You know. That's what I put on my base. Yeah, you know, I don't mess around with drugs. I was playing. I was playing. You know, uh, I don't buy regular. The, the band was playing loud, and I was playing with four of them.